Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special exclusive CUBE conversation here in the studios in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the CUBE, co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. We have an exclusive breaking launch here uh, from a CUBE alumni, Al Bergio, who is the founder and CEO of Fuse Chain, a hot startup going after the blockchain. It's a little bit of open source. This is a launch. This is new information. Al, you're coming out. You're still in stealth, but for the first time, talking about your new project. Again, CUBE alumni, welcome to this CUBE conversation. Thank you for having me, John. So you're the founder and CEO of Fuse Chain. That's correct, yeah. Okay, obviously you're just in Miami, 5,000 people at these blockchain conferences, which are exploding. It's the biggest wave. Crypto and blockchain in, in tandem are creating a very attractive, intoxicating market. I mean, it's the biggest wave we've seen and all the alpha entrepreneurs are going out there. You know, and some scammers too are trying to get into this market. We've documented that on theCUBE, but it's the biggest wave we've seen in a long time. You're out there. Talk about what is Fuse Chain? What's the story? Give us the update. Sure, sure. So uh, Fuse Chain is a, a blockchain technology company um, really founded to uh, support a new open source project um, that is also coming out of stealth mode called uh, the Digital Bits Project. Um, it's focused on disrupting <coughs> the coalition uh, loyalty industry, what we refer to as, let's say, 1.0 loyalty and rewards. Uh, we feel that that uh, market is uh, ripe for disruption, uh, a lot of friction, uh, other things I'm happy to talk about in that space. And we feel that uh, blockchain and the decentralized model with the right partners and coalition could uh, um, change the game. So you got a t-shirt for us, appreciate it, um, called Digital Bits. Um, new open source project, but I like about what you're doing, first of all, uh, you got a great track record, you've got a ton of startups you've done in the past, and again, great exits, and you always have a good eye for where there's disruption, and certainly crypto is dislocating industries, not just disrupting, radically changing the makeup. So before I dig into that, I want to get into, into Digital Bits. A little bit open source. Mm -hmm. So you got an open source project combined with what you guys are doing, so it sounds like you yeah, the Red Hat, what Red Hat was for Linux, you're for digital bits, is that? That's right, so we are, uh, Fuse Chain is focused on um, um, building applications uh, that are interoperable with that blockchain mm -hmm. uh, to support enterprises such as you know, merchants, um, uh, retailers, uh, hotels, so forth, that uh, would be um, working with, um, uh, with the digital bits project. And so um, we feel that there's a, an opportunity to monetize that um, building, let's say, SaaS type models around these applications in supporting and helping make uh, digital bits uh, very successful. So it's interesting, you know, I was observing, I was in New York um, last fall and I walked into a, a funds of funds uh, conversation with a bunch of guys and people were trying to grok where the action was and I kind of raised my head and said, you know, you can tell the good deals are the ones that are going to take down an incumbent industry, not mm -hmm. just a player. You're taking a similar approach uh, which I like about what your deal is. What is it about your approach and, and what is the target and how are you going to attack that? Sure, sure. So, you know, first and foremost, um, really focused on blockchain you know, uh, and, and what was important for us characteristic wise. And, um, and we felt that it needed to be rapid transaction in terms of nature, right? And so um, seconds as opposed to blocks, let's say every 10 minutes like um, uh, Bitcoin, for example. Um, because we were focused ultimately on, let's say, the consumer space. Um, so we first and foremost focused on how we, our approach to developing this protocol in, in supporting uh, the Digital Bits project. You know, from there, it was, you know, what industry did we feel would be best suited for this? And this is how we gravitated to the loyalty industry. Um, there's kind of already a learned behavior in loyalty. Um, people look at points as a, let's say, a form of currency. Uh, they know how to let's say, go join one, earn, and, and what have you. It's kind of like uh, human mining, if mm -hmm. you will. And, and so we wanted to fit, let's say, blockchain technology into loyalty as opposed to fitting loyalty into blockchain. The other thing that I liked in terms of uh, um, us going in this direction was um, really looking at, I mean, there's a lot of different ICOs, blockchain mm -hmm. projects out there and so forth. Uh, we're the first to market with this, we're the first to market with that, but you know, what's the incumbent doing in corporate America, let's say? You know, they're probably sitting and waiting. Uh, it, and there's nothing preventing them from uh, copycatting and, and, and doing the same when there's uh, enough of an established market. What I liked about loyalty, more specifically the coalition models, we didn't feel that with a decentralized model, putting into the market a decentralized mm -hmm. model, that they could um, uh, replicate that quite the same way, kind of like uh, 
um, if you look at Netflix and what they did to Blockbuster. I mean, Blockbuster could not pivot quite the same way. We feel that Loyalty dot one or specifically the coalition programs will have a challenges in adopting blockchain in a similar manner. And so we feel that for that reason, our, our, uh, our uh, what we're up to here uh, with this um, latest venture is going to be highly disruptive. Let's get to the business model after we talk a little bit about the, the actual tech and the product. So you have digital bits and notice you guys have a trademark on that mm -hmm. going on. So, okay, but it's going to be open source. So what is digital bits? Is that the coin? Is it a utility token? Talk about how does it work? What sure. are you actually doing? So Digital Bits is the name of the open source project. It's the name of the blockchain uh, protocol. Uh, it will be the name of the uh, cryptocurrency as well, the native cryptocurrency to that blockchain uh, once it's uh, uh, put into circulation. Um, and the project itself, um, we will ultimately see that spun into uh, a foundation. So it, it's the name of all of the above in terms of what uh, Digital Bits is. Fuse Chain is a contributor to that project. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we obviously like what it stands for. We're building parallel, um, let's say, management platforms and so forth. Others are free to do this as well, um, and, and have begun to do so, um, uh, that will help make that project successful. You know, so in people other can words, take the code from digital bits and apply <clears throat> it, but you're going to be the token in the project. Yeah, if you think of, like, you know, use Red Hat as an example, right? So there was open source an open source project out there, well, various Linux type projects, right, back in the day. And big enterprises wanted to take an, uh, advantage of that. Um, but who was going to support them in doing that? And so Red Hat's obviously established a very successful market in doing that. So in a similar manner, uh, we want to uh, uh, support digital bits in a very big way. We're building applications uh, that businesses are going to need so they don't have to go build them themselves. And, um, and we'll bring those to market. Who are you parallel. targeting? So you're targeting existing <clears throat> businesses that have loyalty? You're trying to take that business away from it? Is it net new? What's the target market? So the market? coalition uh, loyalty industry is fairly well established. Um, what know, does that mean, coalition? <clears throat> coalition, so multi-merchant. So if, um, you know, in the United States, there's a, a, a brand uh, known as Plenty. Uh, it happens to be owned by American Express, but you know you can go to Macy's and earn plenty, Exxon Mobil, and so forth. Canada, very very big market for this as well. So you have Air Miles, uh, major grocery. They're store always changes. expiring. I hate these programs. Well, that's the other issue with them, right? So there's tremendous friction and frustration now with these programs uh, that exist, and you know we uh, we're looking to uh, um, disrupt that as well. And, and provide. So how do they work with you? Give an example of the use case of how they do that. So um, ultimately. Um, we feel that, so from a coalition standpoint, oftentimes the merchant is paying a reoccurring fee to support that program. So let's say a big grocery store or a hotel or what have you. And um, um, in order for the privilege of their customers to be able to earn, let's say while shopping online at their store or in, in that, in that uh, facility, um, just for the privilege of their users to be able to earn, um, the um, uh, merchant is having to pay the operator of that program before the consumer has done anything with those points. Mm -hmm. And so it's a big cost to them. And we basically, from a, uh, just to sort of quantify, um, there could be as much of a 80% savings versus mm -hmm. what the merchant would have to pay to support uh, 1.0 to, um, to support this decentralized block blockchain-based solutions. So are you guys a decentralized application, are you a decentralized platform, are you an infrastructure protocol? How do you categorically define yourself? Yeah, so Digital Bits is definitely uh, an inf infrastructure protocol, um, um, but focused specifically uh, on loyalty and rewards. And so, um, and just to, 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 to um, it's really open in that sense that um, various businesses and so forth can, can join and support this in a number of different ways, whether it's pre-existing products, platforms that they have, they want it to be interoperable, mm -hmm. or they simply want their um, users to be able to now earn this form of loyalty. And we have, uh, you know, in the coming weeks, you'll see announcements from other uh, brands, uh, some, um, let's say, blue chip-ish, and others yeah. up and coming uh, early stage companies with, you know, doing loyalty in a different way, joining um, the Digital Bits project to, um, um, to take advantage of the you know tokenized economy. I like this Red Hat to Linux and, and metaphor because I think you know no one's actually I haven't seen that yet happen. I see a lot of enablement happening certainly at the infrastructure. Certainly, the decentralized apps or dApps as they're called is a huge growth market. We see a big tsunami coming with dApps, decentralized applications. So 
will I be writing decentralized apps on your platform infrastructure? Is that what they're doing? How are they implementing, in your mind, the fuse chain and the digital bits? So, I mean, there's basic examples of um, products and market already, let's say multi-coin wallets, mm -hmm. right? If they want to enlist digital bits as another cryptocurrency that their app supports, um, then they can you know, um, support the project in that way. So there's a number of different ways that developers or established I can build my own wallet, I can integrate yeah. into a pre-existing multi-coin right. wallet. That's so right. you're pretty flexible, you're agnostic on exactly. how that gets done. Exactly, And so, and, and this is why ultimately uh, digital bits will be spun into a foundation. It will establish some policies around mm -hmm. this, yeah. so it's it's yeah. not completely yeah. naked. There's yeah. some governance. Yeah. Um, so that's that, always tricky. You got to be careful. Well, we we governance from the standpoint of um, I'm, I'm looking at it from the perspective of how merchants um, the terms by which they would disseminate digital bits to their consumers. So right. some lightweight governance. Is it yeah. hardcore governance or lightweight? How do you view no, it? no. It, it's I would say lightweight. So it's it's uh, making sure that there's no uh, bad actors, uh, uh, at least at the time of. Is joining. that going to be a nonprofit or part of the fuse chain? No, no, nonprofit. Okay, yeah. okay. So let's get into some of your journey. Obviously, entrepreneurial um, journeys are are happening all the time. A lot of people are jumping into the ICO and or crypto blockchain as a start. A lot of my alpha friends are doing it. It's just like wow. It's like this is a big trend because mm -hmm. it's disruptive. Oh, highly. Whenever there's disruption, you're going to have entrepreneurs, but also scammers. We'll get that in a second. But talk about your journey. Obviously, you got to get formed, um, get a form, firm. It could be expensive. We've documented the cube with Goodwin, uh, a law firm in the Valley that's doing a lot of ICOs. Um, it could be expensive, there's tax consequences. So how are you looking at it as an entrepreneur? You actually get an opportunity recognition, check. Now you got to put it together. Utility token, are you raising money? Are you doing yeah. an ICO? Can you give us some <clears throat> details? So it's a utility token. We are raising money. Fuse Chain um, initially is uh, focused on raising capital. Let's call it the old fashioned way. So Fuse Chain itself um, is is uh, uh, taken in uh, equity uh, investment, not involving uh, any, uh, let's say, cryptocurrency. So no token sales on that, simply just... To date, but yeah. uh, uh, Digital Bits itself uh, will be um, um, you know, partaking in, in raising capital uh, for its, for the project. As with Fuse Chain's ICO or their own no, ICO? No, no, it would be the Digital Bits uh, project. So is, will the ICO go through Fuse Chain or will it go through Digital Bits? It will go through Digital Bits. Okay, yeah. so you got a utility, so that involves a token sale. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do a private, that's equity for Fuse Chain, mm -hmm. and then a token sale for Digital Bits. Correct. Okay, that's nice structure. Call it the pre-pre-sale yeah. in advance of, of um, it actually, uh, uh, being widely disseminated. So what is the utility of the platform? Because that's the, that's the Howey test. You know, yeah, that is yeah. The so we're keeping it really simple uh, um, to start. Uh, we feel that um, uh, we'll be able to demonstrate other utilities with, the, with this project. Um, but similar to other projects out there, if you're familiar with like Ripple and, and Stellar and so forth, um, some basic utility. You need to have some of the coin to be able to send coin. Um, and, and so we're keeping it relatively simple from that perspective. There's, there's a, um, security benefits and- So in, the, utili in the utility you're going after at launch is token sharing? Correct. Okay, and the activity is loyalty based to the merchants? Um, yes, and consumers. So okay. ultimately, Digital Bit stands for all these sort of things I just mentioned, um, integrated together in this decentralized yeah. model, really focused on getting back to users. Yeah. So uh, first and foremost, users being consumers that use these programs and the merchants that have historically supported these types of programs. Yeah. In addition to that, Digital Bits is also focused on um, society, you know, giving back to society. More specifically, aligning itself with charitable organizations worldwide um, um, that you know, uh, the project itself will yeah. be able to give back to. You're an infrastructure guy, your last start was hugely successful, you sold it on exit, um, you know, peering and networking. You know, one big global network now. So I got to get your perspective as an entrepreneur. You now you've been traveling, we're trying to get you in last week um, uh, here on theCUBE to talk about your project uh, and getting out there now. But you've seen a lot of the events, you're out in the field, you're out in the trenches. What's the landscape like in crypto and blockchain? Um, can you offer any yeah, observations? Uh, so I, I, <laughs> good, bad, and ugly, yeah, what's it take? I was, uh, for example, more recently last week, I attended uh, the North American Bitcoin uh, blockchain conference down in Miami, uh, nearly 5,000 people. Um, tremendous buzz, great pedigree uh, among uh, speakers, uh, both domestic speakers worldwide. Um, 
and people, I would say, of all walks of life. A lot of people are interested in uh, either in the space or very interested in the space. And uh, I mean, I don't have the numbers in terms of what the attendance was um, last year at that conference, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's 10x. I mean, are these noobs the in tech? Are they tech gurus? What's the makeup and profile of some of the folks in here? Uh, Overstock.com CEO, you know, one of the keynote speakers of this event. Obviously a very well established yeah. uh, company, um, heavy, uh, in blockchain with uh, with their subsidiary T Zero, um, as well as you know some of the up and comers, uh, great pedigree, more specifically associated with the blockchain space, but you know really uh, supporting a lot of these uh, events and and um, being great evangelists yeah. for all things blockchain. So I got to get your perspective. And again, you've seen many ways of innovation. We were talking before we came on camera. Um, I've been saying, and, and we've been talking privately in the Valley here and in, in other places, that this is like the dot-com bubble, but it's accelerated. Everyone's getting their surfboards and jumping out in this big wave. So some think there will be a crash. I think there'll be a kind of, probably a reset. It's just too much action happening. And again, the dot-com bubble, everything actually happened. So, yeah. so um, it's a little anecdote there. But the point is, there's some scammers. Yes. There's some bubble activity. Mm -hmm. How are you sorting through that noise? What, what's, uh, what, I, what should people look through? Because I mean, when people are like, well, I'm skeptical, Al, you're, on a, you're riding a hype wave yeah. right now. What's the real deal? I mean, the reality is with anything super exciting, it always, there's always scammers. I mean, you know, this is known, I mean, tr if you take traditional stocks, you know, there's always the penny stock scammers, let's say, right? And, and so this is not necessarily something exclusive to blockchain tokens or what have you. We see this in, in the traditional capital market systems and equities that are out there today. Um, I, I'd say that this is very much, you know, mid 90s internet in terms of equivalent. Um, the benefit of blockchain is that the internet exists. So social networking, Facebook, I mean, the, will, the ability to get news out there uh, widely disseminated. The internet exists it help, it, and that infrastructure is helping support um, the rapid growth trend that we're seeing with blockchain. Um, so. I would say that um, it will, um, um, it is a bigger phenomenon than, than the internet yeah. was in the 90s by virtue of the internet now existing. So I got to ask you, so one of the things I've, I always say is that if there's no value being created, it's really a mirage, right? Mm -hmm. So what's interesting about blockchain is that there's a lot of value creation opportunities. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you get to see that, and certainly you see it from fuse chain and, and digital bits. If someone said to you, Al, this thing's a bunch of hype, where's the value? Where is the value? Why is crypto and blockchain attracting all these entrepreneurs? Why is it so intoxicating? Why is it attracting every all walks of life? What's the value so creation if you put, opportunity? Yeah, put, put cryptocurrencies aside for a moment and just focus on blockchain as a technology and really what it stands for. It's, it is truly revolutionary. Uh, this is something that um, with the ability to have distributed ledgers, uh, solving the double spend issue, all of these things that historically could not be done with the internet uh, or other forms of technology. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so it's very powerful in terms of its applications in, in areas of, let's say, even supply chain and how businesses mm -hmm. can have this sort of trusted uh, collaborative platform or technology um, where you don't have to trust any centralized corporation, uh, other institution or what have you, and, and it just works. Um, so that is, it's the technology itself, it's highly powerful and it's um, already evident that it's touching a number of different industries. So outside of the cryptocurrency, uh, let's say craze, um, blockchain is definitely here, it's here to stay, and it's going to just continue to So it's to a mature. fundamental infrastructure shift. Absolutely. All right, so let me give you the old snarky comment that I get on Facebook all the time. So, uh, John, crypto, it's on this blockchain. Have, have you seen a distributed database before? Right. You know, LOL. So that's kind of some snarky comments. So the naysayers will be like, it's just a distributed database ledger. And then some people will be like, I just don't see the business case. You know, why do people actually need blockchain? So what's your take on those two, two points? So I think that, um, I mean, that's a great way to look at it. What can't you, uh, uh, you know, can you solve that problem with just using a regular database? And probably oftentimes the answer is yes. So blockchain shouldn't necessarily be used for everything. But there's certain things that historically, and again, we're smart seeing contracts it, is one. Exactly, I mean, come yeah. on. immutable we, smart absolutely. contracts. And so there's a number of industries where um, uh, having it be blockchain based is definitely better than yeah. you know, dealing with distributed you know, databases. I mean, I've been I've been commenting. I'm pro I'm pro blockchain, as you know. <laughs> pretty hot, pretty biased. People know that. 
However, what I say to folks is, look, there's a dynamic going on here that's revolutionary at the infrastructure level. I think that's true. I think that'll play out. And, and I think immutability and then the decentralized nature of apps, it will be a whole nother genre of software development, mm -hmm. whether it's media entertainment to, to software. But, but ultimately, it's these communities. If you look at in the media business, I was just at Sundance, there's new artists coming on that have their own audiences, right? right? So those are crushing the elites. So you have a revolution where the common person or group of people could get together in an unstructured way, decentralized right. way, to take on elite or huge industry incumbents, or industries themselves. That's a phenomenon that's kind of nuanced, absolutely. but I, it's real. It's absolutely real. I mean, think of open source traditionally. Um, you needed your employer to sponsor you, right? Hey, can I come, if I work for you, can I spend 10% of my time in a open source project? Yeah. Right, the open source project itself never really had a mechanism to provide some for, form of remuneration. Now by tokenizing and, and so forth, these native, let's say, currencies, an idea can provide a potential for reward, and we're seeing that happen. And so, um, but it, it's no different than any other great idea. Yeah. Um, 90 plus percent of startups you know, don't necessarily make it. Um, 90 per plus percent of blockchain ideas may not make it, but the reality is you know, uh, 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 you know, a community with a great yeah. idea can kick off a project on their own yeah. and it could you know, stand well, the test of time. Red Hat became popular from Linux, which was a second tier citizen in open source. Now it's tier one, obviously open source is running things. So I got to ask you a final question on the business model. How are you guys planning on making money? Is it from supporting the open source project specifically? More service, is it on the coin side? Is it managing the coins? Where do you guys, do you have visibility yet into y that yes. business model? So I would say yes to everything you just said. So Fuse Chain um, um, will you know, create shareholder value in a few different ways. One, uh, obviously being one of the uh, uh, first supporters to the um, Digital Bits project, um, we obviously want to see that project get wildly successful, um, coin appreciation, and so the asset appreciation uh, that um, uh, uh, potentially could occur there will create shareholder value for Fuse Chain. In addition to that, Fuse Chain is building applications um, that will be SaaS-like in model. We'll be able to derive reoccurring revenue. Um, uh, you know, freemium type models, but we'll derive yeah. reoccurring revenue. Supporting well. the ecosystem of, Correct. say, the digital bits, That's uh, right. how it evolves. Right, the merchants, utility. you could go build software yeah. yourself, or mm -hmm. here's a subscription-based uh, uh, platform that All you right. can use, um, uh, and we'll provide support as well. Having fun? I'm having a blast. I mean, it's like a, it's the 90s all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Get the twinkle in the eye. I gotta, I gotta say, it's super intoxicating. You know, I'll take a hit of that uh, blockchain in, in, in next next segment with you. Appreciate it, it's really awesome. Blockchain and crypto, really amazing revolution. We're doing our part to unpack it, analyze it, and also look at the good deals out there. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, special exclusive Cube conversation with Fuse Chain coming out, talking about their project for the first time, Digital Bits with Al Bergio, the founder and CEO. Thanks for watching. Take a hit of that watch.